So let's go ahead and work an example here that would be using the law of sines. Uh, we have triangle ABC written down here for us with some of the information filled in. We see we have two angles and the length of the included side. So this is actually going to be a perfect problem to use the law of sines for. Uh, anytime you think that you might want to use the law of sines, it's going to be a good idea to just go ahead and write that down right away. So remembering our law of sines, we know that the sine of angle A over the length of side A is going to be equal to the sine of angle B over the length of side B, which is also equal to the sine of angle C over the length of side C. So we've got our law of sines up here now at the top of our page. Um, and let's look at the information they gave us. We have angle A, but we don't have the side across from it. We've got angle B, we don't have the side across from it, and we've got the side C without the angle C across from it. So if we were to go ahead and solve this triangle, uh, the best place to start I think it would be with angle C. It should be the easiest one to figure out. We know that the three interior angle, angles of a triangle need to sum to 180 degrees. So subtracting 75 and 46 away from 180, we're left with 59 degrees for our angle C. Now that we've got angle C taken care of, we've got kind of a matching side here. We've got uh, angle C and side C. So we're definitely going to go ahead and use those. Anytime you can match up an angle with its opposite side, you know we're going to use that in the law of sines. Um, looking at our diagram now, let's go ahead. We've got angle A. Let's go ahead and find its matching side here. Let's go ahead and find side A. So we can use here the two parts of our law of sines here that deal with angle A and angle C. So we can say the sine of angle A, so the sine of 75 degrees, over the length of side A, which we don't know, so we'll just write down A, is going to be equal to the sine of angle C, which we know now angle C is 59 degrees, over the side C, which we now know is 14. You see we have this equation now, to, we have a proportion here, and we only have one unknown, so we should be able to solve for it. Easiest way to solve for A here is let's go ahead and cross multiply, cross our proportion. So we will have A times the sine of 59 degrees is equal to 14 times the sine of 75 degrees. And now we can just divide both sides by the sine of 59 degrees and we'll be left with the fact that A is equal to 14 times the sine of 75 degrees all over the sine of 59 degrees. And once we get here, we can basically just go ahead and plug this in the calculator and we can get a nice decimal approximation. And when you do that, making sure you calculate, your calculator is in degrees mode, not radians, we will get that the side A is about 15.78. So let's go ahead and write that in our triangle. All right, so we've got all the angles solved for. We've got two sides, just one side left, side B. And we can go ahead and do side B pretty much the same way we just did side A. We're going to match it up with its opposite angle, B, and we'll use our two starting sides and angles that we got here, C. So we'll just kind of write up a very similar proportion. We'll have the sine of angle B, so sine of 46 degrees, over the length of side B, which we don't know, is equal to, again, the sine of angle C, which is 59 degrees, over side C, which is 14. We can cross multiply this proportion and we will have 14 times the sine of 46 degrees is equal to B times the sine of 59 degrees and solving for B we get that B is equal to 14 times the sine of 46 degrees all over the sine of 59 degrees and when we plug that into the calculator we can get again a decimal approximation for B which is about 11.75. So we have now solved this triangle out completely. Just to do a quick check here we can see that angle B is the smallest angle and it is now across from the small side. Uh, angle C is our middle angle it's across from the middle length side and angle A is our largest angle and it's across from our largest side. So that's kind of a quick check to kind of make sure that all the calculations you did make sense and for this one it checks out.